Did you wash your hands? Yes. Okay. No, it was picking his nose. Well, no, because no, Junebug was, licking, was it. licking my hand. Oh. Like, pretty hard. <clears throat> you already. Sissy. Hello. Junebug. <laughs> Junebug. Junebug's she's down in there somewhere. Yeah, she's roaming she's around here somewhere. She's under the table, dying of heat. Whew. Yeah, it's about 95 degrees outside. Uh, <laughs> it is. It's so 100. Hot. Yeah, it's crazy hot. Yeah. Hopefully, this universal yum isn't all melted. <laughs> if it is, I don't know what we're going to do. This time it says, the Emerald of the Equator. I don't know what that means. I have no idea. You at home might. Anna's guess was what? Well, see, I was going to say Sierra Leone, but then it, that's diamonds. That's where diamonds come from. Like Uruguay or something. Well, this is showing emeralds. Yeah. And lizards. Big a lizards. Big, a big, like a... Beetle monsters. Well, I, I know it's one of them uh, Komodo dragons. That's Easter Island, isn't it? Is it? I don't isn't know. Where, where they have Komodo dragons? Somewhere like that. Dude, it's all sticky. It's sti well. Whoops. Well. <laughs> I'll pick that up. Now, now we're going to have glue in our stuff. Uh, look at that. Look, look, that's stuck real well, good. Hang on. I didn't know we were going to have a glue apocalypse here. Well, the glue is it's off now. biodegradable. It's off. It's on the floor. It, it didn't. It, it landed over there. Anyhow. <laughs> Please, thermal. It's a big box. Let's see usual? what it is. Yeah. yeah, usually they're about half that size. Wow. Indonesia. Indonesia. Hmm. Huh. I don't think okay. we've had one from there yet. No? No. Have we had one from Pakistan? I, I think. Indonesia. I don't remember. Isn't that cool. And in, I think Indonesia, isn't that an archipelago? That's where Krakatoa is. Yeah, Komodo Krakatoa. Island. Okay, yeah, there's Komodo dragons. There's Komodo Island. Let's see. I'm sorry, Indonesia. There's Bali. Oh. Apparently, Indonesia is like an archipelago of different island countries. Oh, okay. I think. Okay, well. Yeah, I heard about that. What, well, Krakatoa? Or oh, yeah, the volcano? Yeah. Krakato, where does it show on here? It doesn't. There's Sumatra with the Sumatra tigers. And that's pretty cool. Oh. Plus, once again, you got the games and stuff you can play. So, very family oriented. That's one thing I love about this. That's not going to stay, but maybe it will. I'm going to it back. There we go. Okay. Okay. So, are we doing the trivia? Yes, or are we... we are. Okay. Indonesia is home to over 700 A active volcanoes, B unique religions, C amphibian species, or D different languages. Volcano. Maybe all of active. the above. Unique religions. I'm going to say. I'm going to say amphibian species. Yeah, because I think they only have that one. What you call it? It is different languages. D. Wow. I would have never guessed that. Would have never guessed. It's teeming with active volcanoes. There's 127 volcanoes and 250 okay, well religions. Okay, that's teeming with active volcanoes. Well, then it's all of the above. And amphibious species, there's 270. Those numbers don't come close to 700 different languages. Because uh -huh. Indonesia is comprised of 17,504 semi-isolated islands, hundreds of ethnic groups develop their own unique ways of speaking. Tack on influence from foreign trade, immigration, and colonization by the Netherlands and Japan, you end up with a whopping 700 distinct dialects. Wow. That's a lot. I can okay. barely speak one. <laughs> I can't speak. I can speak English kind of good. <laughs> <laughs> or is that kind of well? Uh, kind of decent. <laughs> you want to join us, Daniel? I'm good. Oh, you're good. <laughs> You can get a chair and sit there off the camera if you want to. Okay. I'll sit in the living room. 
Okay. <laughs> Never Anti social. He just shot. <laughs> that's oh, June Buck's chasing him now. <laughs> Actually, he's smart. He don't want to be a part of this. <laughs> like, I don't want to be a part of this craziness. <laughs> Okay, number okay. two. Number two, there's a lake in Indonesia where visitors can A, die for expensive pearls, B, fish for enormous tuna, C, take a high-speed ferry, or D, swim with poisonous jellyfish. I want to uh, say... The jellyfish. Yeah, I'm going jellyfish. <laughs> what was the first one? I'm die ready. for expensive I'm ready. pearls. I'm, I'm going to say A. I want to say take a high-speed ferry. Please be poisonous jellyfish. It is swim with poisonous jellyfish. Yeah. Yes. Man, you got That's it. just the oh, one thing I really want on my it hurts. <laughs> Patrick, Patrick, let it go. It hurts. <laughs> Sorry. You actually do very well. Like, that, those yeah. are very good impersonations. I, I do pretty good, Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Kakabon Lake is one of two natural places on Earth where humans can swim with jellyfish and emerge totally unharmed. Because what? there are no natural predators in the lake, the jellyfish species that live there, moon jellyfish, spotted jellyfish, and upside down jellyfish, have evolved without defensive stingers. The lake's one venomous variety, the box jellyfish, can't sting anything except a tiny fish. It's about the size of your fingertip. Well, I don't want to find out. I thought that box jellyfish could kill people. That's what they I can in Australia. Yeah. yeah can. What's the difference? I mean, maybe it's a different kind. Because I've seen people hospitalized over box jellyfish getting a little stinger on them. Die. Yeah. Yeah. So that's confusing. I don't know. Check something real quick while you read the next one. Oh, I'm reading it? Yeah, read it. I just got looks. Okay, number three. Indonesia produces one of the world's finest coffees. To make it, coffee beans are extracted from animal dung, soaked in champagne, grown in volcanic soil, or dried directly on the equator. They what now? What? Okay. Oh, that's that fair civet coffee, isn't it? What? Is that what you said, coffee? It, it's it's, it's coffee one. extract from animal dung. Yeah. Soaked in civet. champagne, grown in volcanic soil, or dried directly on the equator. No, it's the Hold animal on. dung. I, I know Little which one it is. It's the yeah, animal it's dung. monkey things. It eat looks them like and a, they poop them. Yeah, and then they civets, get the stuff from the... It, isn't it called civets? Well, we're going to find out. Yeah, and it's like $80 an ounce. I'm going to go to Indonesia. I don't want to drink coffee. It's Kopi Uwak. Oh, it's a gourmet coffee made from beans that have been eaten by a small retin-like mammal called the Asian palm civet. Yeah. The animal's unique digestive system ferments the beans, giving them their fancy flavor. Farmers do the dirty work involved with collecting and cleaning them. Then, <laughs> voila, what? they've got coffee fit for a king. That's expensive coffee, too. It ain't cheap. Yeah, you go for a restaurant. The poor animal. <laughs> What's wrong? This coffee tastes like poop. <laughs> Literally. But Man, they this say is some crappy coffee. <laughs> but they say it's good. Uh, no. I'll, I don't know. I'll, I'll take their word for it. I'll pass. If I had, because I think it's like forty bucks a cup. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, for a it's cup. It's expensive. Yeah. Yeah. If that I ever had coffee. forty dollars for a cup of coffee, I'd probably be so rich. I don't know. Well, that, I ain't paying 40 bucks for a cup of coffee. No. I'll get my dollar coffee at Walmart. I know Starbucks a cup of coffee is twenty nine ninety five. Oh, my gosh. Oh, well, I'm just... It's Star like eight or nine dollars. Starbucks uh, is not... Like, my professor calls it five bucks because that's really what it mm -hmm. is. It's five bucks. That's crazy. And, <laughs> I don't like okay. Starbucks coffee. I get it's okay. It's just that it's nothing that special. I don't. It's just coffee. Yeah, I mean. Well, their straight coffee. Coffee to me is a little bitter. I don't. Yeah. I get their other stuff. I get the fancy coffee. I, I don't like. The, like well, I like their chai lattes. I, like. I get the grande asphalt mocha. Oh, or their so pink drink. Uh, they have new peach. Cool. They have new peach drink. Oh, peach. I thought you said pea. I'm like. There's a pink drink that you can get. It has okay. strawberries in it. It's good. That's good. Okay. Let's get on. Moving 15, on. In the 15th century, Indonesia produced the world's first piggy bank, kite, paper airplane, or cookie jar. Cookie They're jar. The world's first. <laughs> the world's first. In the 15th century. I want to say kite, kite just because. Yeah. Maybe. So four. Oh, it's a piggy bank. Y'all are yeah. right. No, that's a cookie jar. Uh, no, I thought you said well, piggy, piggy bank. bank cookie cookie jar. jar is same syllables. Sorry. Though the term pig jar has been used since the Middle Ages, derived from pig, a clay pig used jar. to make small containers, it was Indonesia that gave the piggy bank its iconic shape. During the Majapahit Empire. <laughs> what? Majapahit. Where? 
<laughs> Magpie fit. <laughs> okay. Don't be looking at the answers. I ain't got a clue. I'm sorry if you're from there. <laughs> it, it, uh, yeah, terracotta pot shaped like boars were used to store money, but they didn't call them pea mix. They were called selling gan. <laughs> what word it looks like mm. fit. They was called hog jars. <laughs> a, a word that fittingly means likeness of a wild boar. <laughs> the thing is, they don't tell you how to pronounce these words, and there's some accent marks, and I don't know what they are. Okay. Um, Moving on. An Indonesian company created the world's largest package of instant noodles, lollipop, fishing boat, or pair of bell bottom jeans. <laughs> I, w- I wish it was the bell bottom jeans. Boat. That yeah, would be I funny. Fish, fishing boat. Fishing boat, what did fishing. you say? That was the first one. Package of instant noodles. Yeah. You're I'll just go. going with that because this is the first I'll one. Go for noodles. It's the package of instant noodles. Well. <laughs> Grandma, you would win the Jeopardy. Yeah. Yes. That's what you would. So, a package of instant noodles. If you wanted a quick meal, we'd normally suggest instant noodles, but those noodles, made by the Indonesian company Endo Food, would take over a week to slurp down. Complete with seasoning packets, the super soft serving is an exact replica of the company's regular size noodles, except it's 11 feet long, 7.5 feet wide, and a half, 1.5 feet deep. Anyone want to repurpose their garage as a microwave? Yeah, more. Okay, so they have That's lots of noodles. That's enough sodium to kill 100 people. I guess it is. One packet of that oh, ramen I know. noodles. It's awful. It's like a thousand. It's so good. Oh, it's so good. Well, that's why Holland is gaining weight. And, well, and well, she and she's been eating that wiener. Friend. Because Grandma's been giving her a bunch of them. And See she what I do? Eating. What I do? I get the shrimp cup of noodles, and then I get a bag of the little tiny frozen shrimp. Now I throw a handful of the frozen shrimp in there. <laughs> Makes it even better. Right, I never thought of that. I'll do the same thing with chicken because you can get that pre cooked frozen chicken, uh-huh. the little cubes. Yeah. You just throw a handful in there of the chicken and makes it real good. Because uh-huh. then you actually get chicken in it. Yeah. Instead of you get that little, little little flake that swells up that's really might be chicken, but you're not sure. Uh huh. Yeah. Anyhow, it's whatever it's made out of. <laughs> when an explorer discovered glaciers atop Indonesia's highest peak, he was celebrated for his bravery, ridiculed by his peers, awarded two million dollars, or jailed for trespassing. I feel like trespassing. that he was jailed for trespassing. Yeah. Go directly to jail. Do not collect two million dollars. Do not collect. Go straight <laughs> and, to jail. And be harassed by your elders or whatever. <laughs> so he was ridiculed by his peers, actually. In 1623, Dutch explorer Han Karstenstone saw glaciers on top of Puncak Jaya, Indonesia's tallest mountain. When he told people in Europe about seeing snow on the equator, they mocked him. Two centuries passed before his claims were verified, and then people began calling the peak Karstens' pyramid, though it's a bit late for that. I don't know how yeah, to say that name. Much sense at all. I can't, I can't pronounce Dutch. You know, Dutch people are strange. What number are we on? God bless you, Dutch people. Right, I don't number mean seven. strange in a weird way. You're just... Good. You know, yeah. You all do have, I think, isn't it Dutch that have the olive bolus? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, y'all got olive bolus. Oh, and chocolate is And so salted good. licorice. Yeah. Ooh, oh, I, I don't like licorice. Devil's mm. out. I love salted licorice. And apple. Ap- apple. Apple stroke. 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 The one day I, I took they German classes. They make those classes. stroke waffles. Those uh, are good. We've I, had that from Holland before. Oh, what? I was gonna say the one day, like I've been taking German classes. The one day that y'all get the German yeah, box, no, I wasn't here. She was getting here. ready to go to Germany. I, I was in Germany she, and actually no, saw. No, it was like a week before you went to Germany. We did the snack crate, and you didn't want to do it because you was busy and running around falling in love. <laughs> Cute. And not only that. It was a bonus box. They sent us, it was like double what we usually get. It was really weird. <laughs> she wasn't here. Well, she was here. She just, I don't want to do it this time. But well, anyhow. I think that I actually had something going on. I don't remember what it was. But, yeah, you were falling but, in love. Okay, well, whatever. But, anyway, <laughs> anyway, I actually ended up seeing one of the yeah, well, snacks yeah. over in Germany, yeah. which was cool. Well, we saved you those, so you yeah, eat so them I got you some. Could, yeah. So, okay. it all worked out. Okay, number seven, the Indonesian tradition Parang Topat, Rice Cake War, features a reenactment of an ancient war waged over rice, a rice cake cook-off, a massive food fight between Hindus and Muslims, an hour-long race to collect rice from paddy fields. 
I want to say it's the food fight. I'm That's what I'm going yeah, to say. Yeah, it seems yeah. like I've heard something about that. Yeah, I'm the food fight. They very vaguely put it. It's a massive food fight. Yeah. It's okay. Every December, Hindus and Muslims on the Indonesian island of Lombok celebrate praying topat. Isn't that where they throw tomatoes at each That's other? That's what They pelt thinking. each other with balls of sticky rice called ketopat. Ke- what country is it that does they throw? They throw tomatoes. Oh, it's awful. I've seen that. Yeah, they yeah. just. I feel oh, like it would be kind of fun. It's like though. a mess, yeah. Oh, it would you be. Wouldn't want to wear it. Get in your you eye or something. The, the food fight is meant to celebrate the harmony between these two religious groups, which is why it's held at Pura Lingzar, a centuries old Hindu temple featuring a sacred Muslim shrine. Also part of the festivities, feast, traditional music, and parade. Okay, number eight. Indonesia is home to the world's uh, largest, smallest, most colorful, or smelliest flower. I think it's the smelliest flower. Yeah. yeah, what do they call it? It's, it's supposed to smell like a dead body. It's supposed to smell like... It blooms like once a year. Yeah, is that where that's Once at? every five years or something. Oh, largest and smelliest. Because I think the smelliest one is the largest Oh, one. it's huge. It's massive. Yeah, it's... yeah, I forget what they call that. Uh, yeah. You have Indonesia's bonkers biodiversity to think. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Like last month's country, Colombia, Indonesia, is one of... What? Hold on a second. This question was tricky, and you have Indonesia's bonkers biodiversity to thank. Okay. Like last month's country, Colombia, there we go. Indonesia is one of 17 mega diverse nations on the planet. Among its kooky wildlife, the world's largest flower, Rafflesia arnoldi, which weighs up to 24 pounds with one and a half foot long petals, yeah. spot it on your booklet no. cover. Then there's Amorphophallus titanum. It's not titanium, that's titanium. Titanum. A flower whose pungent odor is compared to rotting flesh, which explains its nickname corpse flower. Yes. I've seen that they corpse say it flower. It smells like a dead body. Yeah. I'll have a picture of it. That's it right there. It is? Yeah. Oh, I thought it looked like a longer. No. Oh, it's a fat, funky looking thing. Hmm. I was looking at the recipe. It looks like a strange recipe. Oh, fried rice. Okay, but I can't. Well, we'll do that Hold on at the end. Come on, one more to go. One more. Hang, hang in there with us, people. Which was discovered on the Indonesian island of Java. Java's crypt. A prehistoric species Oldest of plant, man. fossils of an ancient human species, yeah. a book of lost languages or herbs that can cure chicken pox. A fossil. That's family. Yeah, fossils of ancient Is humans. It? Okay. They call him Java Man. Fossils of an ancient yeah. human species. Oh. Yep. We've been eating Indonesian yums for a long, long time. In 1891, Dutch scientist Eugene Dubois, I'm going to say, that's how I'm going to say it, unearthed okay. the, the Java Man. Yes. The remains of a distant human species called Homo erectus. Yes. Estimated to be between 700,000 to 1 million years old, the fossils are critical to developing the theory of evolution. Yeah, and I think he was only like four feet tall or something. Or maybe not. I think it's a different one. I mean, you think that, like, he got shrunk by mm-hmm. something? I don't know and how. The I oldest even... human is named Lucy, and I can't remember where. Oh, they there's were. one that's. I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah, but Wasn't then that there's... over at the La Brea Tar Pits. Uh, it might have been. There was one over there. Something. Yeah. There was one called Utsi, and he was froze. Yeah, Utsi was the froze dude. Yeah. The figure was murdered. Utsi. Okay. Utsi. Yeah, we yeah, watched Utsi. the thing about Utsi. Actually, he's cursed. Everybody that's touched him has had bad things happen to him. I don't remember. I mean. Yeah, I... it's like you. T U Z or sense of weird spelling. Anyhow, let's get to the this. Okay, uh, the first one is the, this. This? Yeah, it's called Papatonk Black Black. Finally, everybody's like, finally. Actually, we should do this in two parts. This should be part one the next month. Black pepper cassava crackers yeah. with black pepper <laughs> seasoning. That's what she's waiting for. Yeah. 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 Look at her, look at her chops. Okay, the cassava shrub, whose leaves are pictured on this yum's package, grows an underground vegetable called, appropriately, cassava. Because of how it's grown, cassava is commonly called the tropical potato. The two are also similar in that neither can be eaten raw and they're both bland until properly prepared. Just like the potato, cassava is extremely high in starchy carbohydrates, which is why it's the primary nutrient source for over 800 million. 800 million Jeez. Southeast Asians. It's also why the potato chip aisle in Indonesia is actually more like a cassava cracker aisle, locally called Kripp, Kripp, Kripp. The right crackers home. come in dozens of funky flavors, including onion, chili, prawn. Oh, I don't even know what prawn is. It's the one we picked out for you, freshly ground black pepper. 
The Cracker's unique crunch and intense pepper seasoning are two delicious reasons that stand out from other potato chips. I'll have you saying, yum, a shrub for real. Man, it's covered in pepper already. Yeah. I have a five. Ooh. Like a four or five. <laughs> Don't be spitting out in front of me. Oh. How could you like that? Huh. <laughs> I'm trying. Oh. The initial taste was better than the Yeah, the, the initial taste. It was good. And it's like the it's aftertaste. It's like a pork that's rind that's went wrong. It is pork like a pork rind. Covered in pepper. I give oh. that like a three or four. Yeah, three. I don't like the aftertaste. No. Zero. Ooh. Mm. No. Okay. No. Oh, it just went to a two. <laughs> what do you think? Two Sorry. or three? Eh, more like Not a three. three. Cause it's not two. horrible. Uh, Yes, Mama it is. don't like oh. now. It's gonna be a two. It's a. It, it's like I feel like that's something that would be an acquired taste. Hey, well, wait a minute. It's no cholesterol and it's gluten free. <laughs> Plus, it has zero grams of trans fat. Boy, I'd get skinny with that around. <laughs> the pepper's okay, but it's just. I couldn't eat it. But there's some <laughs> weird flavor in it. I'm not. Yeah. It is. It's like a pork mm. rind that's went bad. Yeah. Okay. Ugh. Oh, no. Throw that in the garbage. What's next? Um, you'll have to let Daniel try that. Yeah. <laughs> bang bang white wafer. Bing bang. Bing bang. Bing bang. B E N G. Oh, bing bing. I thought it was bing bang. No. Okay. It's white chocolate coconut coated wafer with cream filling. That might make you feel a little bit better. Yeah. I Did we mention you were visiting case, the country yeah. that produces the most coconuts in the world? Sorry for yeah. forgetting to tell you sooner. Fortunately, this delectable candy bar gives us the perfect reason to bring it to your attention. You shouldn't be surprised that given its abundance in Indonesia, coconut is one of the most common ingredients oh, in the country's cuisine. In Sumatra, coconut milk is used to make a beef curry called rendang. In Sulawesi, I want to say that. Toasted coconut yeah. is used in chicken dishes like nasu liku and spicy soups like tabu moitimo. In Java, a sticky rice snack called katan intip. I don't know how to say any of these words. It's coated in soybean powder and freshly shredded coconut. And of course, you'll find coconut inside most candy bars in Indonesia. Four layers of crispy wafers, three layers of cream, and a rich white chocolate outside covering coconut. This sounds the best way to try the country's most plentiful crop. That looks like a coconut. Sometimes you feel like a No, 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 hold on. What oh, I'm going to enjoy having it. Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. You don't never oh, I'm going to enjoy having nuts. Now, it's not. It's coconut. Okay. I guess it's just too young. young. I guess it's a generation now. Oh, yeah. It's the millennium. Yeah. Wafers. Wafery thingies. They kind of look like the nut or butter things that you get in the store, except coconut. Yeah, kind of. I think. They're already. That's good. Mm. Mm, yeah. That's five. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's five. It's not overly sweet. Mm -hmm. Definitely five. And it's not real strong coconut either. It's just mm -mm. nice. It's actually really nice coconut. Real mellow mm -hmm. coconut. Because I'm not a coconut that's fan, but I would eat here. that a lot. Yeah. Sounds good. pretty good. All right. Now we got these. Five Rangers. Garlic Presto Corn. Hacha. I don't think I'll, t I'll test them because I don't, I don't like what? garlic. These? Garlic. Corn nuts with garlic seasoning. I'll leave those for you guys. With a name like Presto, you might think these garlicky corn nuts came together in a snap, but this yum's ingredients had to travel a crazy long way to find each other. And that's because neither corn nor garlic is from Indonesia. Indonesia was corn free until the 16th century when Portuguese settlers brought it over from the New World, a distance of nearly 10,000 miles. Garlic is technically native to China, but ancient traders brought it to Indonesia by traveling along a 7,000 mile trade route called the Silk Road. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I history. did not know that garlic was native to China. When both ingredients made it to Indonesia, they were instant successes. Corn now appears in everything from spinach soup to salty fritters. While garlic adds flavor to sauteed greens in the country's ever popular peanut sauce. 
So this addictively crunchy yum made with real corn kernels and punchy garlic seasoning is 100% Indonesian innovation. What does presto actually refer to then? Just wait until you see how fast this yum seems to disappear. Strongly be like presto is gone. So you want like one piece because I don't know. I don't mind. I used to like garlic yeah. a lot more than I do now. It's okay. It's not bad. Yeah. What? That's Mama don't like it. Like it. No, I no didn't she know. didn't try it. Uh, <laughs> Mama, come on. It's not me. It's not strong. Mm -hmm. No, I can judge from what she read. I don't like it. I'm not a garlic. Yeah, they're not. It's not, and it's not real extremely garlicky. Uh uh. It has like more three, of the. Maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three or four. Yeah, yeah, three. three. Give it about a three. Oh, look, it's got little rabbits riding the corn cob. That's cute. <laughs> I just noticed that. Little rabbits. Wee hee haw! <laughs> oh, not you go in there? You okay? I'm feeling bad. <laughs> Won't you go in there and sit down? Yeah, go lay down? Yeah. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm gonna have to. Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> Take Jim Buck with you. Take so bad. I think it's his shoulder. It's yeah, I'm hard. sure. Probably. You're pushing, you're pushing yourself. You are pushing. Hard. What you need to do Way is. Way too hard. I think you did too much driving today. Anyway, let's let's give Sheree a round of applause for even participating. <laughs> Your complimentary prize is waiting for you on the way out. <laughs> Well, they call it consolation prize. Yeah. Well, too bad that she couldn't try these awesome looking things next. Yeah, the which... wafer rolls. Ooh. That looks. Ooh. Those look like those. Is it a praline? Those. Yeah. Those. Um, they come in little things. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Okay. Cool. Read. Or... It's a banana wafer roll. Banana. Vanilla wafer rolls with chocolate banana cream filling. Banana is pretty ordinary, right? On Indonesia, where there are over 300 unique varieties to choose from. Oh, banana versus banana. Bananas originated in Indonesia back in 8,000 BCE, and over the past 1,000 years, some downright wacky types of built up. There's pisang mas, the golden banana, which is just about the size of your finger. A banana like this, but packs a hugely sweet flavor often compared to honey. Pisang susu mera, red milk banana, has an eye catching red peel, pink pulp, and a sweet creamy flavor. Pisang. Ooh, we our own individual. Ooh. Pisang Kapok is perfect for Indonesia's uber popular banana fritters, while Pisang Batu isn't so tasty. It's filled with incredible inedible seeds, so it's usually reserved for birds. With all these banana varieties, it's easy to see why Indonesians would be inspired to create unique banana snacks like this young. With vanilla, wafer roll, ooey gooey chocolate filling, and real banana cream, this young this yum takes after Indonesia's barkers bananas is anything but ordinary. I am excited to try this. But I, if I can get it open, I can't get it open. Oh, there it is. There it is. I got it. Need help? Hold on, Grandma. Take this. Oh, my oh, God. Okay. It smells, smells like okay. banana. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's fine. Oh, yeah. That's fine. to it. That's right. Did you not get to the filling? Yep. Air. Oh, that's good. Mmm. That was good. Mm -hmm. That's five rangers. Yeah. All day. Mm -hmm. Every day. All day, all day. Mm. That's the best thing they got in here. Okay. Well, I'm saying. <laughs> Savor the moment. This mm -hmm. is what's next. Yuppie noodles. And the eggs. <laughs> it sure is yuppie noodles. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Sour novelty gummies. Well, ain't that cool? Indonesia elevates the phrase oodles of noodles to a whole new level. Take me, Mia, uh, Goreng. <laughs> These words are so hard. I'm afraid I'm offending people. Oh, isn't that? It's like a little cup of noodles. Indonesia's most common noodle, noodle dish is whatever that word is. Made with thin noodles, pan fried in garlic, onions, chicken, or beef, then topped with a fried egg. Mia Goring oh, is served. It's just sour gummy that <coughs> doesn't have all that. It's served literally everywhere in Indonesia. You can find it on the street in the microwave. It's a noodle version called Indomie. Mie Goring is a staple. Family owned cafes called Warrens. And in India's most 
high end restaurants. But wait, oh, there's another place you can find it. It's an inventive, incredible noodle gummy. See, them looks like, looks just like me, Goreng, but don't expect a savory noodle flavor when you bite into it. It bursts of sour fruit. Dig in. You don't need to visit a war room or even your egg. microwave to try it. So let's cut the sushi Let's egg. cut the egg. Who gets the yolk? <clears throat> well, sometimes it depends on how good or bad the yolk is, whether people get it or not. <laughs> Oh, I'm anxious to, to try to... It's spongy. Well, you get the big one. Who, me? Yeah, me and what, Grandma get what the... If, what if Mama wants the... Or I Grandma? No, she ain't into gummies, I don't think. Yeah. But they're sour, so... Well, that was good. Ooh, I like that. Looks like that, uh, good. Airheads. Now, that's more like an airhead. Or a noodle. I bet that's what the this sour is. This is the noodle. This is a gummy noodle. It's like the airheads. That is good. Actually, those are good. <laughs> and they're not real sour. Mm-mm. Mm. I could eat a bunch of them. Yeah, I like that. That's mm -hmm. cute. I like that. Five Rangers. Yeah. Okay. It's a little on the sweet side, though. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was sweeter, but I could eat a bunch of them. This? Yeah. Vanilla Pandan Layer Cake. Vanilla. It's got cream filling. Grab this green goodie from your box and you'll be holding hundreds of years of history. We'll start at the beginning. Pine down is a category of plants native to Southeast Asia. For centuries, ancient Indonesians used its leaves to make everything from roofs to ropes to baskets to boat sail. Leaves of one particular pine nut species called Pinanus amarilifolius. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> had an especially Aww, a pleasant aroma. So they were used to add light, earthy sweetness to rice to me. I look sorry to me. Uh, hold on. Huh? Well, just a piece of the yeah. top came off. Well, I guess and it's the bottom now. In 1603, the Dutch East India Company established trade colonies in Indonesia, bringing with them their crafty cooking techniques. The result? Complete culinary crossover with Pandan as the star. Pandan, probably, is how you say that. Pandan. Pandan. Today, the flavor is so essential in Asian cooking that it's earned the title Vanilla of the East. But it's green. The most famous recipe, Pandan cake, just like the one in your hand. A fluffy Pandan flavor cake is filled with white cream to make a green treats. Perfect fusion of Indonesia's iconic plant, the Netherlands brilliant baking, coming together to create a delicious taste fish. Okay, let's go. Yes. Let's go. Sniff that before. It's, it's not a bad it's smell. It's not a bad smell, one. It's just odd. Well, it's, it smells like it might taste good, though. Yeah. Mm, that's fine. It's good. Yeah, yeah. it's good. Mm -hmm. Completely different taste. I don't know what to compare it to. I don't know. Coffee cake? Angel cake? Coffee cake. Yeah, but it's... It has the same texture yeah, of like angel that, cake. that subtle flavor or whatever it's called that they make it. Yeah. What's it called? Panam nom or... Panam... Panam... Pan <laughs> Pandan. It's good though. I had five rings. Pandan. 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 Okay, now what's left is oh. the yum bag. That is so good. Okay. I could I could eat those with some coffee because it's not real sweet. That that's you a can't be a say good. you can't compare it to angel food cake because it's not that no, sweet. No, it's more like coffee cake. Yeah, but it's not real sweet. Mm -hmm. Well, I was saying it's the same texture so as like angel pound, cake. Yeah, or pound cake. Well, maybe. Uh, yeah. Maybe. With angel food cake in this. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's not as sweet as angel food cake, but it's mm -hmm. got the same like fluffy kind of texture. Yeah. Um, but the the other thing, like the actual taste of it, is really good. Okay. Google. Google. Oh. Yum bag. Yum bag. Yum bag. Yum bag. Yum bag. Oh, I thought you was gonna pull out the actual thing that I was gonna. Well, I am. Oh, okay. I'm just doing the yum bag thing. Okay. Gulas. Tamarind candy. The gulas. Find the gulas. Yeah. Oh, there's three. Yay. Cool. We get all we each get one. Oops. There we go. Oh, okay. It's tamarind flavored hard candy. So tamarind that must is be a real something. popular. Yeah. Okay. Um it is a versatile tree. This is tamarind and it comes from a tropical tree that's been grown in Indonesia for centuries. Though the fruit is known for its culinary applications, 
Um, in Indonesia, every single part of the tree is used for something different. The wood is perfect for making chairs and chopping blocks. The leaves reduce joint pain. The seeds are used to make glue. The fruit, you can put it on your forehead and then leaves your headache. The pulp yeah. is rubbed on your well, silverware yeah. and your spoons to make them shine. Um, <laughs> you can you shine your silverware and then eat, eat it when you're done. <laughs> I guess. You can always add it to your food for an unforgettable sour flavor. In our opinions, it's definitely the ideal usage, especially when it comes in the form of this hard candy. I feel okay, like that my neck go. is like, ugh. Hold on a second. Man with real tamarind, you can tell, tell based on the classic brown color, this yum is an authentic, blah, 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 blah. It's an authentic taste of Indonesia's most multifaceted fruit. You might need to save an extra candy to rub on your forehead because your mind is about to be blown. Okay. Eat them. Rub on my head. Head on. Apply directly to your forehead. <laughs> Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Unique. It does not have a, a distinguished flavor. It has no flavor. Oh, it does. It does, but it's, yeah, it's, hmm. That's weird. It's like a weird, it's not like a bad, I don't get mm -hmm. like a four. No, it's five. It's good. Well, yeah. I don't think it's I'd unique. eat them that much. No, I wouldn't eat them all the time. They're not real sweet either. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, pretty good. Mm -hmm. Last but not least. Parago. Two in one melon Parago. milk chewy candy. Ever crave a sip of cream after eating a cantaloupe? No. <laughs> You're in for a totally new flavor experience with this milky melon sweet. Candies that combine milk and fruit are insanely popular in Indonesia, and no fruit from banana to strawberry to melon is immune to the combo. That being said, the melon milk fusion seems utterly unusual to people outside Indonesia. But don't have a cow. The flavors of this chew aren't just tossed together willy nilly. Open up the package and you'll see the milky white inside is totally distinct from the green melon coating. Take a bite and you'll realize this color distinction isn't just for show. First, you'll taste blast honeydew flavor, and as you chew, the fruitiness will give way to creamy goodness. The two flavors don't com compete, they bring out the best in one another. Let this candy be your first foray to a whole new world of creamy fruit combinations. Uh, who knows, next time you chow on a melon, you might find yourself reaching for the milk. Interesting. Okay. I can't open it. I'm just waiting on you. <laughs> You know, it's like hard to open these plus read it at the same time. Okay. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. It's chewy, but it's not loser dentures chewy. Yes, I got dentures. Oh no, you got dentures. Mm -hmm. Is it? It's denture friendly. Mm-hmm. That's five. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. You can taste the milk. It's mm -hmm. weird and the. Uh, the lime is it's it's like a cantaloupe no it ain't really lime yeah it's i taste cantaloupe yeah mm -hmm. it's pretty good <laughs> mm -hmm. it's interesting now watch the recipe um it says it's a honeydew honeydew it says it's a honeydew flavor oh. which honeydew and cantaloupes don't taste that different to me well, we'll give you a sneak peek. Okay, yeah, you're gonna have to do it because the stuff's stuck in my teeth. <laughs> Nasi goreng, goreng, Indonesian fried rice. Ooh, that looks good. That is going to be next week's uh, recipe. And she's gonna cook it because Sheree is still down for the count. Oh, I'm making that? Yes, you That's are. funny. I'm gonna make some fried rice. Yes, that's the way they say it. That's, <clears throat> that's, that's be cola burger. Oh, I guess that's the extra with the super yum box. Oh, that's what you missed. That's mm. okay. Oh, okay. Yep, cola burger. Actually, that's probably the same as that gummy stuff. So we got gummies anyway. Yeah, that's fine. Anyhow, oh, one thing. <clears throat> this is the 100th episode. Really? Believe it or not, we've done 100 Mondays with Moms. <laughs> no wonder we're running out of things to talk yeah. about. I guess. So, we'll wrap this up so everybody can move on. 
<laughs> We're praying for everybody. Got any prayers or anything? Anything going on? Not any me. local news? I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> local news like people out there well we want to know what's going on in Powell County <laughs> hey that's mine <laughs> I was seven man <laughs> is there another one yeah no, there's like two but, more yeah. those are different that one was mine now you break it up you realize you already <laughs> eat the piece that I ate, that I chomped on uh -oh. fine. <laughs> anyhow keeping everybody in your prayers yeah, this is the 100th episode. It's kind of cool that, it, that it's a... A snack crate? Uh, well, a universal, you know, we can't or say Or whatever it is. Snack crate is a brand. It's, it's, they're basically... It's a box. It's a snack it's a, box. It's a box that has yummies in it. Anyhow, y'all appreciate you watching. Uh, Lord, 100 episodes. I can't believe that. I can't either. It's getting close to two years. Mm-hmm. What is it? Four more episodes would be two years. Hmm. So that's wow. crazy. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have to have a special like two year yeah. anniversary show. We're gonna have to do something. Yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, God bless y'all. Appreciate you tuning in all every week. <laughs> <laughs> Hope we don't bore you too bad. And uh, we'll see you next week where we're gonna do the recipe. We're gonna fry some rice. We might do mm -hmm. something else. Maybe. We'll see how it turns out. I think last time it was dipping, it wasn't too bad. Oh, it was really good. It, you did a really good job. Well, thank you. Uh, this time, <laughs> we'll see how I did all the chopping. She did all the mixing. I, I mixed it. I can mix. She's a good mixer. <laughs> I can make a main bowl of cereal. Bravo. And she doesn't spill a, a drop of milk. Uh-uh. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And hey, y'all, God bless. We'll see you next month. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.